Okay, uh, and also thank you, Javier, uh, for giving me that one. Uh, we have just arrived this morning, and uh, I just checked in the hotel, and uh, only myself took a shower. <laughs> uh, just now, it's uh, eight o'clock in the morning in the in the in Osaka. Anyhow, uh, welcome to the our workshop, and uh, today I like to talk about the, you know. Uh, the, our research, the cognitive development of robotics, as a bridge between the neuroscience and the development of psychology. I have a very big mouth. But anyhow, as Kuei mentioned, we are in our university, we are doing uh, the various kinds of robotics. So uh, first of all, I'd like to just introduce very, very brief introductions of the robotics laboratory at Osaka University. So uh, according to the Japanese custom, we just name of the professor as the name of the laboratory. So the, my case at the lab. And also uh, we have the host of the lab. The, he's going to the move the graduate school of the University of Science, but still uh, our university. And the clinical lab and the Oscar lab, that's the graduate school of engineering. And also we have the graduate school of engineering science too. So uh, there, uh, the uh, professor Allied lab. And uh, uh, today, uh, okay. I just to stop. Uh, the <laughs> 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 so anyhow, so uh, the, uh, the, at the graduate school of engineering science, there are the Alai lab and the Ishiguro lab and the Miyazaki lab. And about the Alai lab, after me, the professor Zamai is going to talk about uh, the introduction of the Alai lab. And the Ishiguro lab, uh, Hiroshi Ishiguro is a good friend of the Javier, and he is my colleague. Uh, he was my colleague. Uh, but uh, very recently, he moved to the graduate school of engineering science and so on. But uh, he's very famous for his androids. As I listened to it, he made his copy of the Geminoid and uh, he studied the very interesting research stuff. Uh, today, uh, I'm not, I do not have so much time. I was supposed to be 30 minutes talk, I suppose, 30 minutes or something. So actually, I prepared 80, more yeah. than 80 slides. Therefore, every 30 seconds, I, I have changed the slides. Okay. Anyhow. So uh, uh, this is uh, in our, uh, the clinical lab, and, uh, and uh, they are doing some, uh, many labs are doing some robotics, and they're mainly focusing on the, the human robot interactions, but the different viewpoint. So uh, in the clinical lab, they are doing some kind of uh, hyperhuman or something. That is, you know, the mechanical system is, in some sense, hyper or the superior to the human uh, the, you know, the, uh, the capability and so on. And also, they apply to some medical application of the uh, measuring uh, uh, something of the some eye pressure or some uh, some uh, some uh, operation so on. Uh, this is the Oscar lab. is also the next to the uh, the clinical lab, and they are doing some kind of dynamic systems control robot uh, doing. So and also the rescue robots and the controlling and so on. And they especially focus on, on the, some dynamic system. Uh, especially the dynamic passive walking, you know, the, uh, in the inner world, so the bipedal walking and the slope, there are no actuators, no control, but still they're going down. So uh, there are some mechanisms of the dynamics, so they are doing some research on this one. And also, uh, this is the Miyazaki lab, also they are doing some kind of interaction between the human beings and the robots, and they developed some ping pong robots, that, you know, between the robots can play the ping pong to the, against the human players, and also some medical application too, and so on. Uh, okay, so that, that's a very, very brief interaction of the uh, you know, robot survivors in the Osaka University. And uh, you know the RoboCup, probably, of course. But maybe you do know I'm a founder of the RoboCup. You, you, you know it? <laughs> Anyhow, so I just showed some video clips. It's just, uh, you know, or, it's actually this is uh, three years ago. And the first trial, of the game between the robots and the humans. The actual the human teams consist of the, the trust of the Robocop Federation because you know uh, they should not claim anything. So anyhow, so uh, the robot team is a champion team of the middle sized league, a German team. And of course in the world uh, the robot team is uh, everything automatic. So uh, in this case the robot does not have any uh, the hands, therefore not throwing but the free kick. But who who is going to uh, make a free kick, it decided automatically in the, uh, the robot team, by the robot team, and so on. So uh, actually, this is, uh, this time, the robot team had not prepared to make game with the human players. Therefore, it's just uh, tracking the ball and uh, some making, try to shoot or something. But anyhow, there are many different uh, research issues found. For example, were some interactions 
of the, between the humans and the robot players, and also were, uh, how to uh, cooperate and so on. So, uh, okay, I, I like to show the some. Okay, this time the Peter Stone, the U.S. trustee members, uh, make a shoot and get a uh, one point. And uh, after that, the goalie of the robot team make a very good saving. So I like to show at that time. Yes, anyhow. So this is actually 2007 in the in the U.S. and uh, Georgia Tech. Okay, just look at. Okay, so look at here. Okay, it's saving. So anyhow, so that's uh, uh, not the current situation, but uh, in a war. It's like, like uh, the typical situation of the Robocop or something. Okay, so uh, uh, so uh, as uh, Javier mentioned, we are focusing on the, the human development or something. Or, uh, of course, you know, we're, uh, we like to know what the humans are, especially the human development. So I was born in fifty three and at the elementary school, I mean just middle, and junior high school and high school. And I got married when I was an undergraduate student and uh, I was in the United States one year at the University of Maryland, and this is the first Lobo Cup. And this is a, a live performance of the karaoke. Not karaoke, it's like a karaoke. It's a singing song in Shanghai last year. Okay, so uh, this is out of my talk. So the treasure model of the interaction through the cognitive development process. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the uh, human development process again. And uh, next one, the cognitive development robotics we are uh, duplicating. And uh, uh, I will show some examples in uh, individual development for the physical interactions, the vocal augmentations, and so on. Okay, this is uh, you know uh, comes from the the, uh, the book of the neuroscience. As you can see, it's in the world uh, the embryo. So uh, 18 days from the conception to 20 or 20 to uh, 24 days. So every two days, the embryo at the, at the beginning just a plane or like this one, but gradually the so central nervous system is formed. So it's like a miracle. So in this case, the gene coding is dominant. And after 24 or 30 weeks, so almost the same structure of the brain as uh, the fetus obtains some uh, very almost a similar structure of the brain like, like as uh, adults. But the connection is not completed yet. So in this case, uh, in this period, of course, in order, at the beginning of the, of the brain development, the gene coding is dominant. But in these days, uh, some environment issue is uh, focused, should be focused on. So this case, uh, this indicates what's going on in the womb. So after the conception, the horizontal axis indicates the, uh, the weeks from the conception, and the vertical axis indicates the movement. So uh, maybe seven weeks after the conception, so some you know, uh, emblem or starts to move or something. And around the 13 or 14, the so shock, uh, sucking and the swallow. On the other hand, so about the sense, a touch is the first uh, sense uh, started, so around the 10 weeks. And also uh, vision and auditory also started around the 20 or 22 weeks, something like that. So it means that. So this indicates uh, in the, or the, uh, the movement of the 90 weeks. So you can see there's some kind of movement of the fetus and exploring and touching and so on. And also were 33 weeks just before the birth. And then, so you can see that, so were uh, mass opening and also eye opening and then the movement of the hand and so on. And after the birth, also the, uh, the newborn baby shows uh, the several kinds of behaviors. And one year, the <coughs> infant shows uh, different behaviors. So uh, for example, at the hip months, they showed some hand rigor, just look at the hand, and so on. So this means that it's kind of the forward and inverse model of the hand. So forward and inverse model means that 
For example, you specify the joint angles, the shoulder and the uh, you know, knee and the wrist, and then the, and the effect of the hand torsia is determined. This is a forward model. On the other hand, the inverse model, if you try to catch this one, so the posture of the hand, you have to specify this one. But in that case, uh, what kind of the angles of the shoulder on the wrist should be uh, you know, uh, assigned is kind of the inverse model. So at the fifth, hand, fifth month, so the infant started to the kind of the learning of the inner world, the world and the inverse model of the hand. At the six months, when you the other face, this is some integration of the visual and tactile sensations. At the seventh month, drops the object and uh, uh, observe the result, that's the causality and the permanence object. So therefore, the inner world, at the one year, the infant learned the various kinds of behaviors, and also it means that so where the block indicates the, you know, some learning target uh, from a viewpoint of the robotics. So uh, to be honest, you know, uh, and uh, we don't have any robots who can learn the, you know, these kind of the, you know, behaviors in just one year. So where the infant is kind of a miracle and also resource of the resources are big, big mysteries. So what this indicates uh, what kind of facet of the world should be. Of course, some dynamic interaction between the inward uh, agent and the environment, and also some incremental process happen. And then, so the before, the infant supposed to be the very, very passive agent, but actually not. So infant is very, very active, some kind of thing, or exploring the, the world, and so on, so on. But at the same time, the infant has a set of the constraints, some physical constraints, that means the body structure and also the constraint of the movement and so on. And also we're uh, inside, so the neural motivations, the body and the synaptic plasticity, it's a kind of the fundamental uh, items of the learning. But also with some social interactions between the caregivers and infants is very, very important to, uh, to, you know, to develop some cognitive functions. So what we are advocating the cognitive development robotics, that is that, you know, uh, aims at understanding the human cognitive development process by synthetic or the constructive approaches. And its core idea is physical embodiment. The physical embodiment means that that enables information structuring through the interaction with the environment, including other agents. Of course, you know, the physical embodiment should, can be, uh, seems to be the default for the robotics researchers. But if we use specialized all kinds of behaviors, fixed behaviors, the dynamics is not so active. Therefore, the physical embodiment is not so real one. So the physical embodiment is, uh, the important issue is uh, information structuring. Some get new information through the interaction. That is the point. So where the designs of CDIs from a viewpoint of that design, so what kind of capabilities or structures should be embedded? That is uh, uh, nature side. On the other hand, how to set up the environment so that the uh, robots embedded uh, can gradually adapt themselves to more complex tasks in more dynamic situations. This is the case of the, uh, the side of the nature uh, side. And what are the temporal development structures? So these are design issues of the CDL. But uh, actually, as you may know, the discussion on the issue of the underlying the neural mechanism and the behavioral verification are needed. That means, you know, we are advocating the cognitive development robotics, but we cannot do it by ourselves. Well, we need some collaboration, you know, uh, from the, the neuroscientists and also the, uh, some new uh, developmental psychologists and so on. This is the approach of CDR. So first, constructed uh, some model of the model, uh, the hypothesis generation, proposed uh, some competition model and some simulation to verify, and also work uh, verification with real agents, that in case the humans, animals, and the robots. And also, on the other hand, also we can offer the new means to or data to know the humans, especially some psychological experiment. We can utilize the robot as a believably, uh, you know. Uh, objectives uh, target and so on. So well, this is the whole picture of my project, the Synergist Interesting Project supported by JST, so that's a funding agency in Japan. So we have uh, four groups. Among them, the blue, uh, three blue groups is just from the robotics researchers. The physiosa is uh, physically synthetic intelligence and the professor co hosts group. And uh, uh, Yasuo Kunis' group is uh, University of Tokyo. 
lecture not at Osaka University, but okay, the, he is uh, my colleague and <laughs> he is under the, my project. So anyhow, the third group is the Hiroshi group. He is famous for his androids, and uh, especially he's doing some kind of the research of the uh, development of the, some communication and so on. And the first group is that uh, Professor Toshio Ino is at Kyoto University, and he is a cognitive neuroscientist. So he is doing some imaging uh, study and also some joint research with uh, uh, medical doctors who cares autistic children and also the Williams syndromes. The both two syndromes are some extreme of the language development. Therefore, we expect the you know, uh, Professor Toshio in his group to uh, to develop some model of the development. And we try to apply to the, this model to the robots or some kind of feedback to, the, to improve the model and so on. Okay, uh, this is the whole picture of my project. So uh, we started some fetus simulation and then so was some motor learning uh, based on the, you know, some platforms uh, we have devised, uh, we have developed. And some, uh, some uh, the cognitive uh, functions, uh, higher cognitive functions social uh, behavior and so on. And also were some body representation, the spatial perception is very, very important issues and the tool use and so on. And uh, we have been focused on the mainly some individual development, that is, uh, you know, some kind of motor development and so on. But after that, so were the, the brain and the brain interaction, that is some social interaction. So we're, uh, uh, case studies, we have done the bowel imitations, the joint attentions, the sympathy development, and so on. But now we are suffering from the, some kind of the, uh, the formalization of the social development. So now we just uh, uh, study the very specific the bowel imitations, the joint attention, and so on. And now we try to integrate uh, the bowel imitation, the joint attention, because actually they, you know, these two processes were the several process or together in parallel. Okay, so uh, I just to uh, show some kind of the platforms of the Professor Hosoda's group. So uh, they are using some artificial methods uh, to generate very dynamic movement. They actually, uh, usually so many robotic researchers using the electric motors, but electric motors are not suitable for generate very dynamic movement, such as jumping and running and so on. So this antigen method is very close to the, some uh, our methods, uh, some natural methods, to generate a very dynamic movement and so on. And uh, his group uh, do uh, uh, some research on movement, the legs and the arms, the hands, but all the time no brain <laughs> yet. But actually this means that the body itself has some kind of computation or something. For example, you know, the dynamic movement, or, you know, passive movement or something, so it seems that no brain, but actually the body itself calibrates something automatically. So where his group, you know, uh, de uh, developed the various kinds of uh, less, uh, the platforms of the uh, robots. And uh, recently uh, they developed some baby robots and uh, this indicates some movements of this one, okay. So uh, the eyes, I, eyes, two eyes are just fake, <laughs> okay, but anyhow. The movement and the start of the clawing. So uh, this kind of process, of course, in words, this is kind of the uh, motor development. The one question is how the motor development affect to the cognitive development. That's a big question still. Okay. So the try the principle of the cognitive development. Uh, we, uh, for example, I uh, you know. The uh, uh, physical environment in Japanese shintai sen explained as an uh, event that the body specializes interaction between the, the active agent and the environment and its contents. That is also the infra infrastructure to form the cognition and the behaviors by providing the structure to the interactions. Okay, so uh, we okay. So now I'd like to show some examples. Okay, so the fetal fetus the fetal development. So well, the big question, one of the big questions is that um, uh, neonatal, neonatal imitations. So uh, the Melton and Moore uh, published the paper in, in the science in 1977. So uh, the newborn baby, after the two or three hours, they can imitate the inner world, uh, uh, the parents, the movement, for example, this one, this one, this one. Uh, two months ago, 
Oh, you know, just uh, yeah, two months ago, I met Mercer. We had some symposium, and uh, yeah, he, he was here, right? <laughs> the black hair, but now he is a very gray hair. But, uh, so he's, uh, yeah, that's the first time I talked with him, but he is very, very adaptive, and he is very, very interested in our work. So anyhow, so the one of the uh, candidates, so what the many people suppose there, this is innate, okay, from the beginning, infant can imitate. That means the infant knows the correspondence of the, you know, uh, the facial parts, such as eyes, nose, and the mouth, and so on. And also, the infant can control the, the movement of the tongue uh, uh, through the imitation of the, of the adult or something. So actually, after this one, uh, many researchers tried to this one to their own kids, own babies. My guess is that, my guess is too late, right, anyway. Uh, the, my colleague uh, tried and he mentions that, oh, 50-50, or 40-60, it's by accidentally, or the parents imitate the, the baby's behavior or something. Anyhow, so we try to minimize the, some given the innate functions, but maximize the learning capability. So one of the issues is that how the uh, you know, infant can do such a kind of the imitations. So uh, one of the issues is that, okay, so we suppose that something happened in the womb, so one of the group uh, of the project, Professor Yasuo Kuniyoshi in the University of Tokyo, they simulated some fetal brain development. So they prepared the body. It consisted of 19 segments of the sphere and the cylinder and so on. And also almost 200 methods, okay, uh, just uh, copying some real uh, the baby, the real, real uh, fetus. And also very, very simple brain. So the, uh, the, the math is here and uh, also were they support the CPZ central pattern generator, a kind of the oscillators, and the motor area, and the somewhat sensory areas, and left brain and right brain. And this is a simulation result. So uh, in the womb, it's, uh, they support some kind of liquid, and also very soft, very flexible the sphere. So the, the, the features can move the, its movements, and uh, this indicates the masses, uh, almost 200. So uh, uh, this side indicates the activities or how much the, uh, the excitation happened in the motor area and the uh, somewhat sensory areas. This indicates some tactile sensations. So the red means the more pressures and so on. Okay, anyhow, uh, this kind of the, uh, learning process, uh, so the baby got the two learning, uh, two uh, results. Why is the body mapping? So at the beginning, some connection, as I mentioned, so the connection between the, the motor areas and the some somatic sensory area is random. But through the running, you can see that so the somatic sensory map, such as this part, corresponds to leg, a trunk, arm, neck, is obtained. Therefore, in the womb, so the, the fetus learn the, its own the body mapping and so on. This is the one thing. So another thing is the kind of the behavior. So this is just after the birth, so we move the, the, the fetus to the outside. So due to the gravity, some movements happened, like this one. So sometimes crawling, sometimes turn over, and so on. This is just after the birth, and uh, this is shows after the two months. Okay. So it seems difficult to discriminate, but probably, uh, so after the birth, the, the movement just uh, all seems random. But after two months, just like ordered. So it, this indicates uh, you know, the randomness. So uh, we focus on the left leg, and uh, we measure some Lyapunov uh, exponent. So at the beginning, it's just the randomness high, but after gradually, not gradually, but suddenly, anyhow, so the order of behavior happened. Therefore, the through the running process, so the body map and some, you know, some uh, the movement behavior is ordered. So the simple idea is that, for, so for example, in the womb, if the fetus extends his leg, so the, his neck is bended due to the, you know, the womb is limited uh, environment. So such a kind of constraint uh, you know, uh, affects some learning process. And as a result, the body mapping, hap, a body mapping obtained, and also the, some behaviors obtained. This is a result of the you know, uh, kind of the uh, learning in the womb. The, another example, another situation is that, as you can see that, uh, also in the urn, so visual processing is already started. So we suppose that 
For example, some experiment shows that the infant uh, the fetus can perceive the right direction, top or the, uh, bottom or left or right. So based on the, these kind of findings, we make some simulation of the uh, tactile sense, uh, the distribution of the tactile elements of the face. Because actually, face uh, the uh, the features cannot see the, its own face, but the touching uh, like this one. The simple idea is okay. You, so suppose that you you know blind and then touching like this one, but just a little bit open your eyes with a similar movement, but not touching. But the movement is very similar. Therefore, we apply this kind of information to the learning. And after this one, so at the beginning, so the sensor element is random, but the, it's kind of the, the this side is a fake, the three signal. But anyhow, so the, the, the distribution of the sensor element, tactile sensor element, the gradually formed the kind of the, uh, this. Uh, the distribution. So uh, this person, the left eye, nose, and the right eye, and the mouth. Even though still deformed, but kind of the you know uh, structure is kept. And then, so were the during based on this study and the previous one. So in the womb, the, the features already started to learn something. So this indicates not completely the you know uh, imitate the, uh, the you know some proof of the neurotransmitter imitation, but still. It, some extent we can uh, show that we can show some possibilities of you know uh, some learning uh, capability uh, some uh, possibility of learning for the neonatal imitations but still we have so many issues uh, for example the uh, mouth opening reflection when features hear their mother's voice or a uh, lip motion is exceptional while body motion and the sensing functions are compatible to months after the birth or neural, uh, neural infrastructure for neonatal imitation is under subcortical structure. So these findings indicate, in some sense, some, something given from the top or some innate. For example, the lip is very, very high density of the uh, tactile sensations. So this means that you know, some different of the, some other body parts. There are still uh, there are some mystery, but we try to uh, attack this kind of issues. The second one, second example is a physical interaction of the, uh, that one. I like to, so uh, this is this one. And uh, this is uh, you know, a CB square that we have developed. CB square stands for the child robot with biometric body. And it has 56 degrees of freedom. And uh, uh, that air actuators a flexible movement. And it has two eyes and two ears. And also the whole body covered the skin. And underneath, we put on the 200 tactile sensors now. Now, the, the Javier's group has, uh, OK, CB scale has now his, his brother, not the son. <laughs> but, but name is Diego San. OK. So <laughs> much improved by the CB scale. So uh, actually, I have not seen the Diego San yet. So after my talk, I'd like to see the, the brother of CV scale. So anyhow, so this is uh, some research platform to study about the, uh, the human development by synthetic approaches. Actually, uh, I have shown that this robot to the, just before the medical doctor who cares uh, you know, the infants. And he mentioned that this is a typical behavior of the autistic children because normal kids turn over by one leg and one leg. So I don't know why this happened, but anyhow, so this is kind of the you know, uh, one uh, aspect. Okay, anyhow, so the one of the study is that this robot cannot stand by itself, but by assisting, it can stand up. So from, from a viewpoint of the control theory, control the 56 degrees of freedom at the same time is almost impossible. But this case is not so difficult. So this guy is uh, my student. And also now uh, Nodakun is here. He is also the member of the, the, our lab. And uh, my case, first time I failed. But second time I succeeded. Well, one of the guy from JST uh, to, to, to visit to uh, for study, he succeeded one, uh, from the first time. And we had a visitor from the, uh, the princess of the Thailand. She failed five times. <laughs> okay, it depends on the human, uh, the, uh, the, the persons. But in this case, the reason why it's not so difficult is that 
even though it has 52 degree, uh, 56 degree freedom, but the actually some body structure is very similar to us. The mass distribution is also very similar to us. Therefore, for human side, not so difficult to predict the movement of the robots or something. So we analyze that in this case, the control of the robot is a very simple one. It's an open loop and just switching the, uh, the postures from the initial one to the, uh, the middle and the final one and so on. And then we apply some kind of the, uh, some correlations. So where the main purpose is that how to discriminate failure and the success. And the main idea uh, is that if you know, the humans succeed in the rising app, the movement of the humans and the movement of the robot is synchronized. Okay. Then we apply some kind of a special uh, temporal correlation of the, the movement. Okay, it takes some time. Okay, so, oh. <laughs> too much, too many. So uh, uh, this indicates that, so this graph is kind of the global parameter space. This indicates the time lag, this is the time sequence. At the beginning, time lag happened, but gradually in the world, uh, synchronized movement we expect in case of the success. For example, this is the x bar. Okay, so smooth movement happened. And uh, the beginner. Still okay, but the uh, big non smooth is very tricky <laughs> to move that. Or, And we apply uh, this kind of the analysis, and then uh, in case of the success one, the you know, high correlation region is connected. Okay. But on the other hand, <coughs> so well, uh, the failure case uh, in the world, the high correlation area is disconnected. Therefore, the, this kind of global parameterization is very, very uh, useful to discriminate the you know, success and the failure case and so on. So uh, actually, I already spent the more than 30 minutes, so I have to hurry up. Okay, I suppose maybe this is just uh, middle. I think so. Okay, so another example is just uh, uh, rising by itself or the assistant. So, the, okay, the baby tried to stand up by herself by something through the interaction. So, the main trials. So, in this case, the mother tried to assist. Yeah, but yeah. according to the scale of the rising up of the baby, also the mother changes some strategies. So we apply this kind of the process. So that means in our, uh, through the tra training process, so the robot learn or the more collectively robot select the you know, good case or the bad case based on the uh, humans as a, as a criterion and analyze that one. One of the things I have to mention is that, as I mentioned, uh, whole body is 56 degrees of freedom, but in case of the rising up, only 52 degrees of freedom. But we apply the principal component analysis, just two components are sufficient, surprisingly. And also the contribution factors, only two components, almost 70 or 80 percent. So, so this means that even the appearance is very, very complicated movement, but actually not so much as a movement of freedom. So this indicates some in you know, uh, the the component uh, phase, the principal component, first axis and the second axis. And the starting point here, and uh, the, the posture in the middle here, and the final posture is here. You can see some trajectory of the movement. But through the running process of the robots, this is at the beginning, and then uh, second time, or second period, and then the third time. So the robot gradually learn to rise up, uh, look at this here. So at the beginning, just the humans like, uh, pick up the vertical, but the more horizontally here. So this makes a smoother movement and efficient and also quick movement. So you can see that the before the training, so the, the trajectory is uh, more variant, but the after training, 
you know, were the more smooth and uh, smooth and also were uh, the converged to the uh, fixed uh, the trajectory sound. But uh, not that. So what we should apply the, some principal component analysis for the individuals. If you everything together, everything together, it's not so good. So it depends, even though there were 52 degrees of freedom, it can be reduced to the two degrees of freedom, but depending on the person. So still person has some kind of facility or something, but also the robot <laughs> adapt to do something, right? Anyhow. So for the, finally, I'd like to show the, some vocal limitations, okay? So we're in the room, as I mentioned, the, the features run to something. And also in the room, so they affected the mother's voice. Therefore, the auditory system started already in the room. But uh, maybe, probably, there are no, uh, probably, if it does not know the relationship between the sounds and articulations, probably. I do not have any uh, the proof, of course, but probably. And also, the, they do not, the new uh, infant cannot reproduce the other sound as they are. Because even though as a humans, the same vocal system, but uh, actually not, so were the, especially as a, some part is a quite different portion. So how can do that? So the main purpose to be the robot that acquires the bowels of the human caregivers. And what the design issue is that, what is the robot mechanism and what is the caregiver's mechanisms? So look at the real situations, observations in human infants. So humans, the infants and the mothers are uh, mutual imitation, both together. So the mother is very, very happy hearing to the, you know, the infant, the baby imitates uh, her own voice. And also the baby is very glad uh, you know, the, to know that, okay, the, the mother also imitates the, uh, their own voice or something. So the mutual imitation increases the frequency of the utterance. This is a very good practice or something. So we conjecture that it is the force in front speech like queen. The queen kinds of the, uh, the practice of the uh, vocalizations. Okay, so we developed the in the world, not the facilitating the humanoid, the android, but it's a very, a simple silicon tube at the imitating the vocal tract of something. And by changing the you know, shape of the, the vocal tract, so uh, resonant frequency also changes. Therefore, the change the sound and so on. And also as the ear, we suppose that the hormonic structure. The hormone is just you know, the peak frequency of the, from the lowest one and the, uh, the, uh, the spectrum of the voice. So more correctly, this indicates that. So the first hormone and the second hormone so resonant frequency changes depending on the shape of the vocal tract. And the uh, vocal feature for the body discrimination is the hormones. And the non-human primates and the brother are supposed to utilize as a, a particular cues of the human. So you can see that this is a Japanese A, E, U, E, O. Okay, this is in the words, uh, very, very uh, Japanese average female uh, the hormone distributions. Look at here. This is uh, in the world, uh, uh, voice of the robots. It's quite different. But still, you know, we expect, we hope that the inference robots can communicate with the humans. So in case of the also humans, you know, the human infants and the caregivers, even though the, you know, the, uh, the voice itself is very quite different, but still we can communicate. So we apply this kind of the, you know, uh, plot-like teaching. Yeah, the, besides the hardware of the sound generation and uh, uh, the microphone, we also prepare the auditory layer and the action layer. And then, okay, so uh, random queen, it's just a, uh, the robot try to generate, uh, generate the voice randomly. And uh, we fix, uh, we expect the caregiver is, uh, if the caregiver suppose that, okay, this sounds is like ah. In that case, the caregiver returns ah to the robot, okay. So uh, the, during this process, so were uh, so uh, the robots, the asking layer and the audio layer, both layers, it's kind of a over the mapping, it's that kind of a press link. And uh, if in the world, uh, <coughs> we uh, store some of uh, the article vectors, of how to control the vocal tract, and then, so the caregiver returns uh, his or her own as uh, the waves to the uh, to the robots. Also, the robots classify the inwards the bowel uh, the bowel the 
four month vector and so on. And we connected by the heavy and learning. So this indicator that so where the perception or the healing and the sound generation action is tightly connected. So this is a very similar system, similar idea of the mirror system. Why we understand the A or E of others is that you can generate your own A. That is, uh, so you have already a uh, library or something. Okay, this uh, shows the first trial. Can you hear? It's okay? So all the time I have shown here, uh, shown this one, many people claim to me that this is not a baby voice. <laughs> <laughs> this is a middle age, just after karaoke or something. So I changed the, to the air. Oh. Or this is the e a e a. The in Japanese, no 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 something. And also at the same time, not simply the auditory channel, but also the visual channel is that the caregiver and the you know infants look at each other. So lip shape is also what uh, can be imitated. So in this case, uh, e, u, e, o. So this kind of the visual imitation accelerates the learning and the three times. And then it got like this one. OK, can you hear? It's OK. Can you feel some pain? No. <laughs> this is kind of media system. Okay. So anyhow, I suppose I do not have so much time. I spent already <laughs> much time. So uh, therefore, I skip the next one and just, uh, OK, OK. So this is acknowledgment. Thank you for attention. And the please come to Osaka. Everything robotics and the commission is there. Finally, I'd like to uh, stop my talk with this one. This is ongoing. So in this case, the robot tried to learn how to work by assisting. So in this case, also humans and the robot both sides changing all the time dynamically. So now we are doing some research with the dual dynamic systems and also the model with the human behavior too and so on. This is a kind of the studying of the inner world. Some from a physical interaction to the social one, because eye-to-eye -eye contact is very important. Thank you for attention. <laughs>